Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us today for our HashiCorp Solutions Engineering Hangout. Ramirez. HashiCorp Vault enables you to leverage any trusted source of identity to enforce access to systems, secrets, and applications. Vinny will show a demonstration of the high availability within a Vault cluster and feeling over to a DR Vault cluster. After the demo, we will take live questions from the audience. I also want to note that this Hangout is recorded and the recording will be made available after post-processing, usually within about a day or two. I'll email it out to all of you. The demo will be just 15 minutes and then we'll allow up to 30 minutes afterward for questions. So with that, let's go ahead and get started. Take it away, Vinny. All right, thank you very much and welcome everybody. It's uh, nice to have you remotely. I'm hailing from Illinois and happy to be here. So I'm going to speak about our product vault today. Just a quick, short couple of slides to introduce the topic here. Um, HashiCorp was founded in 2012 by our founders, Mitchell Hashimoto and Armand Dagar. A lot of people know us through our open source tools and uh, recently we've started bringing enterprise products to market with certain features that aren't necessarily present in the open source. So today we're going to take a look at some of those features in the Vault product and specific to high availability, disaster recovery, those types of topics. A real quick uh, table setting for anybody that may be somewhat new to Vault technology or architecture. Just uh, wanted to throw this up on what, what we mean when we say the term Vault cluster. And if you sort of zoom in in this circle that's kind of zooming in on one of these tiles, the, a Vault cluster is typically made up of an active Vault server that is also participating with standby servers. And in the enterprise, our preferred back end for Vault is to use console. Uh, there's a couple of other tiles on the lower right of this diagram that are more describing roles a cluster can play in a deployment. So we have a primary cluster role, we have what's known as performance, replication cluster, disaster recovery, and then this notion of a development cluster that's typically used for non-production testing and, and that sort of thing. Uh, what I'm gonna go over today is some sort of basic enterprise architecture that we tend to see a lot through the deployment of Vault in the real world. And so kind of back to the whole tile a concept here in this middle section, the data center one is, is acting as our primary cluster and then a model that is typically deployed might be to put a performance cluster in a secondary data center for hosting secrets and services as close as possible to the resources or applications in that data center that are consuming them. And then also taking some architectural considerations around standing up a disaster recovery in possibly another data center to protect against some sort of catastrophic events that may require a, a full-on a data center or public cloud region failover. All right, a quick uh, lay of the land on this demo environment that I'm gonna be operating in today. I'm actually using AWS to host my environment and in, in it I have, I'm operating within three different regions in Amazon. So my in the middle here, I have my primary cluster stood up and that is in US East 1. I'm also operating in US East 2 for my DR cluster that I will do some demonstrations against. And then I've also stood up a performance cluster in US West 2 just to get that geographic separation of replicating my secrets to another part of the country. Uh, this is pretty light install. I'm just using a single VM in each availability zone. And I've also am running Vault and Console on the same system just you know, for demonstration purposes. We can talk about some of the best practices in a, in a real world deployment, but this is actually a valid uh, architecture just to get Vault up and running. It's probably not the best thing for a robust enterprise or production workload. Uh, each of these regions has its own VPC and I'm using some load balancers in front of each of these clusters. And I've also got some VPC peering between my VPCs to allow communication between all three. All right, so that's pretty much what I've built out. Uh, Vault is both available <clears throat> either through a CLI or RESTful API. So some basic 
check here on vault would be just to run a vault status and see how we're doing. And in this case, I'm connected to my US East one cluster, which I just SSH'd into all three of them. And I can see I have three different servers running console and vault participating in this cluster. This happens to be my active server in the cluster. And I've also got two standbys. So this cluster in and of itself is running in a highly available mode. So we can take a look at that scenario first. Um, this particular, this is my load balancer address that you can see is operating in USD one and talking to these three servers. So we've got uh, really kind of the most basic generic demonstration of using Vault would be to just come in and do some key values. So I've got a few in here pre-populated. So um, the movie Office Space is near and dear to my heart. So we've got a couple key values associated with that. I've got to jump to conclusions, key value, uh, TPS report, and the year the movie came out, 1999. And you know we can we can see that this cluster is up and and running and healthy. Let's go ahead and just drop a secret in here. Let's call this our HA secret. And we'll put a value of testing HA and save that off. So now you can see I've just written a new secret to this particular cluster. And now that I know that this, uh, one other view of the health of these services that I want to point out is since these are backed with console, if I jump into my console UI here, we can see that I have these three nodes that have all checked in. If I jump into services, I can see I'm running both console and vault. Can drill down on vault specifically and if i was looking uh, visually to find which vault cluster is acting as the active i can drill down on my my each node and and check its services and in this case you know this particular service is the active node and just kind of a visual over cli here we can see that all three of these nodes are are up and running and i have both console and vault healthy so on my active node, I'm going to do a, sister, a sudo Let's just go ahead and stop the vault service on the active node. Let's check that uh, behavior with this particular node. As you can see here, I no longer have the vault service running. And that was our active node. So if I want to come back here, since I am using a load balancer, I can just go ahead and refresh that. UI, and I, I this will prompt a, a re-authentication event. So let me just jump back into this cluster. All right, and we're you know up and running. There was no disruption of service during that uh, disruption of my active server. You can see that you know, I still have access to the secret I just wrote, and since I did have a load balancer in front of this cluster, that that motion would have gone undetected to an end user or an application. So just the first demonstration there, of just you know, highly available cluster deployment in production and being able to withstand the loss of you know, the service or the entire uh, uh, system at that point. We'll just go ahead and fire this back up. As I bring that service up, I can also come back to console and take a look at what's going on here with Vault. And it is actually, uh, my, my vault cluster came up, but it's actually in a sealed state. So let me just go ahead and bring that fully back online here. Do that with a if I can type. Let's go ahead and unseal this cluster to bring it back into service. And all the while, as I'm bringing this guy back up, we can see that as it comes back into service, it, is, it reassumes that role of standby. And I can come back either in my UI and try to find out which cluster ended up assuming active. And in this case, it was that third server I have up and running that uh, won that election. And if I come back to my services now, I can see just kind of a, a toggle to refresh that everything is back up and healthy in this particular cluster, which is our primary cluster. Uh, one other uh, 
configuration I had here as illustrated in my demo is I have what's known as a performance replica. So we're actually operating in US West 2 on this particular cluster. And, and with it, I'm able to sync any secrets and or services that are hosted out of my primary cluster and, and, and get those off into a remote region, keep them local and perform it. So kind of a toggle there. Um, you can see I actually have that secret I just wrote that's already been replicated to US West 2. Uh, let's just kind of focus on that one more time here. There's no uh, trickery going on. We'll create a new one. We'll call this uh, performance replication secret. Let's go ahead and save that. And you can see I'm on um, US East 1 in this particular cluster, my primary. And if I jump back over to my performance secondary running in US West 2, we can see that I'm I'm actively replicating my uh, secrets across the wire. Let me get a refresh there. And in this case, it was the secret called performance replication and the key value secret. So that's actively sending these secrets across. And um, I guess another another good demonstration here would be with the performance replication, if in the event that I lose my primary cluster, which is here, let's go ahead and actually take a look at that. I will jump back over to my server here and just do a, oops, sorry. Let's go ahead and stop vault. And in this case, I'm going to stop vault pretty aggressively here and take the entire cluster down. Okay, and we can again go back over to our console UI, get a refresh here, see what services are running. And at this point, I've completely taken my primary vault cluster offline. And I can also reinforce it in the UI by trying to connect back to it. And we can see that that cluster is gone. It's no longer operating. It's no longer in the mix. Uh, what I do have now is this sort of this first layer of some protection here in my secondary region. This cluster is is still active. So you can see here this this guy has the secrets still available. I'm still servicing them. They can still be accessed either by a human or from a, an application needing, needing access to those secrets. So kind of a first layer of protection, getting those secrets off site into another location. Um, uh, this isn't necessarily gonna protect you against all, sort, all, all of the different failure scenarios, but you know, it's, it's a good start as well as it's also assisting in performance in that second location. I'm gonna quickly bring this guy back into service here. Uh, one second while I do that. Uh, Let's get this guy back up. And while I'm demoing, feel free to drop some questions into, into the chat, and we'll, we'll take a look at that as soon as I'm done demoing here. Let's, let's go ahead and start Vault up on all three of these guys. And I am going to have to unseal since I took it down completely hard, so bear with me while I do that. Let's get it. So again, just kind of a recap of what I've shown so far here. I've, I've gone ahead and demonstrated my local primary cluster's ability to withstand the loss of, of one of the vault servers and continue to function healthy in an HA model. And I've also demonstrated that I have a replication cluster in a whole other region in Amazon that was also able to withstand the loss of the primary cluster going off of line. And if I can type. I'm just 
trying to hide my uh, unsealed keys from me, even though I, I think I can trust you with my demo environment. All right, so I brought this guy back online. This was our first primary uh, cluster that we were dealing with here. And now that I've brought all the services back up and unsealed it, we can see primary is now healthy. Back to life, let me just log back in here to show you uh, the last thing I wanna kind of demonstrate. Okay. Um, actually, one one quick note on just the vault clusters in general is um, in that replication I was showing you, let's just take a look at what that even looks like. So a vault cluster is capable of either doing disaster recovery replication. In this case, I haven't configured it yet. I was going to do that with you guys. I did already configure the performance replication scenario. And here you can see that I'm sending that to my US West 2 cluster. Uh, one point on that that I think is just kind of cool about vault clusters is I'm able to send all of my secrets and back um, authentication backends to the secondary, but I'm also able to make some decisions if I don't necessarily want to do that. There's scenarios where you may not want to replicate everything from one location to another. So in this case, I've actually created a local mount on both the secondary cluster and on my primary cluster. And what that is, is this is a method here of segregating secrets, maybe geographically or to a particular data center that you may not want to be sent to another location. So in this case, let's um, let's take a look at that. I've already got a, a local secret in here. I'll just create a new one. So this is my US East one secret. And I just want to show you by doing that, I'm going to back out for visual purposes. You can see this this kind of this root secret is where most of my key values that I'm sharing across, say, the enterprise may be stored. But then I've also made a decision to create a key value that's local to this particular cluster running in US East 1. And when I come back to my replicated copy, you can see you know, these may be my common secrets. I've also got a US West 2 repository for secrets, uh, in this case, key value. And even here, if I want to come in, I haven't created anything yet, but we'll call this uh, US West 2 secret data, save that off. And you know, I'm kind of flipping between tabs here, but I'm in US West 2 on the current tab. I've just written a local secret in this US West 2 local path. And then if I come back to my primary, that's not being replicated both ways. This US East 1 path stays local and is not replicated to the secondary. So just wanted to point that out. I'm also making some changes now too, which are, are you know, going to come into play here when we activate our DR. So let's go ahead and do that. So right now I did, as far as replication goes, my primary does have a performance secondary that I pre-configured prior to jumping on. And, and then I thought it'd be cool to just go ahead and um, enable my disaster, oops, sorry, my disaster recovery live for you here. So in this case, it hasn't been configured. So first on this primary in US East 1, I've also got, uh, just to show you real quick, here's the secrets engines running on my primary. I've also got this secondary cluster stood up in US East 2. So primary is US East 1, and I'll just move this tab to keep them next to each other. And then in US East 2, if you remember on my uh, diagram here, this is gonna be my, my DR here, is this uh, secondary cluster that I stood up in US East 2. So there's really nothing in it right now. I've got just the base when you open up a vault cluster, there's a cubby hole enabled and that's about it. So let's go ahead and configure DR. First thing I'll do on my primary is define it as the primary uh, and enable, oops, sorry. I think this might just be a UI issue for me here. So I went ahead and enabled it as the primary. We can see that it's running as primary and it's not really doing anything yet because we need to provide a secondary cluster to act as the DR target. So likewise in the secondary cluster here, I'm gonna go under replication and 
enable disaster recovery. And in this case, it's going to be a secondary. This is my US East 2 cluster. Let me go ahead and define a name for that. We'll call it DR cluster US East 2. And then we're going to generate this activation token. Jump into US East 2 here cluster. Populate that token and go ahead and enable this guy. All right. So as I did that, um, it went ahead and, and Vault is going ahead and configuring that. I did seal up the cluster that I was actively connected to through my load balancer. So let me just see if I can find which one that was. All right, it was this one here that got sealed up. So let's do a vault. Going to unseal this guy so we can get a clean DR motion here. All right, and back to my uh, secondary DR cluster now, which is in US East 2. I'm just going to refresh my load balancer view. Oh, there you go. It already went for me. So, this is what you're going to see if you try to connect to a cluster that's been configured as a DR secondary. You're not actually able to interact with this cluster and use it, so it's really more of a warm standby configuration. And it's now just syncing all of the secrets and changes that are taking place up until the moment that you need to execute a disaster recovery motion and promote it. So we'll just go ahead and jump back in here real quick, write another secret. In this case, we'll call this our DR secret and call it written after the uh, rep enabled, save that guy off. And then I'll just also kind of fan out some of these other secrets here that are present today in my primary. So we've got, got a little Star Wars shout out for you here. You can see I've, I've kind of populated the different episodes of Star Wars and that's present right now in my primary cluster. Uh, I already showed you some of that office space key value here. Just, just really want to demonstrate that there's, there's some actual data in my primary right now that we're, we're hoping to see when we execute our disaster recovery to that secondary we just enabled here that's actively waiting and syncing at the moment. So I haven't really written a lot of data. This doesn't necessarily take too much time to sync up in this scenario. So let's go ahead and execute DR as our final step. And to do that, there's a couple of motions we'll go through. I'm going to do a, a, a one-time token. And I just kind of use my secondary screen to toggle through this. And I will need my unseal key from the primary. And in this case, I'm using the Shamir secret keys. And I've, I've only uh, configured a single a single key for demonstration purposes to keep it keep it easy, but typically you have multiple and go through you know, uh, an unsealing ceremony if you were operating with that particular method. And I'm just going to decrypt my operation token here. And thanks for bearing with me, people. We're almost through the demo. So now that I've received my uh, DR operation token, I'm able to come back in here and I'm going to pop that guy in and we're going to promote this cluster. Um, my load balancers cause us a, a little bit of a quirkiness in the UI here. We'll refresh it and get a clean view. Okay, so we've now promoted this cluster in US East 2. There were some warnings along the way in the real world. You want to make sure that your production cluster was completely out of service prior to promoting a disaster recovery copy. And this is now my 
quick recovery point for my original cluster. And we'll just come back in here and, and take a look at our secrets. And we can see all of the secrets we were looking at have been successfully synced to this DR copy. I created this uh, fresh secret or key value just as, as a proof, you know, that I wrote this key value out and I, I did it after I enabled replication and, and disaster recovery. So with that, I think it's pretty much the bulk of what I wanted to demonstrate. I kind of threw a lot of stuff out there quickly. Uh, just to recap what you saw, uh, the first thing we did was come into the, might help if I just throw this guy back up. Okay. First thing I did is I had my primary cluster here in the middle. I took one of the servers offline and demonstrated that the cluster itself was highly available. We were still able to access vault services and there was literally no detection of disruptions since I am using a load balancer in front of this cluster. Uh, another point of this architecture too is that I did fan these virtual machines out across three availability zones. So this is actually a pretty highly available cluster in and of itself that could even withstand the loss of, of an AZ. Next thing we did was looked at off to the right here, this performance secondary, actively writing secrets and seeing that they're being synced and replicated to my secondary region. In this case, it was US West 2. And then sort of that uh, motion where I took the uh, primary cluster completely down and was still able to access secrets in my performance secondary. So, um, you know, definitely a form of high availability. I wouldn't necessarily call that so much a disaster recovery posture. And that's where we looked at this third scenario of having a disaster recovery standby that was solely syncing all of the production primary secrets and awaiting a disaster recovery event. And I promoted that and was able to demonstrate that this DR cluster running in US West 2 successfully brought us back online with all of the secrets that we were expecting to see. And I think we're out of demo land and let's see where we're at with some of the questions. Thank you, Vinny. That was great. Um, okay, so first question. Um, so someone is asking, is HA only an enterprise feature? Um, actually, it is not. Um, high availability was really um, back to, to this, this notion here, if I can. If you remember when I first zoomed in on this, this tile here of, of a cluster, Cluster is made up of a, an active server and, and standbys. So in the open source uh, versions of Vault, you are definitely able to build highly available clusters. You can also use open source console to back those. So to, to that question, it's HA is not specifically an enterprise feature. Okay, cool. Um, thank you. And then, um, hold on one sec, uh, more questions are coming in. And by the way, if anyone has questions, please feel free to um, submit them in the portal yep. and try to get uh, them for you. Yeah, and, and while you're looking at the next question, Amanda, just back to that HA question. Now, what what is specific to enterprise is this notion of a, if you look at this, this key here, we have this uh, performance replication cluster. So sort of like the, the lighter gray in this diagram. And that's also what I demonstrated in my architecture in US West 2, that was a performance secondary. That actually is an enterprise feature. So uh, that can be considered a form of HA, the ability to take the production offline, maybe for maintenance or some sort of disruption without disrupting another region. So, so that's more of like an enterprise HA type of feature that you're not gonna see in, in the open source. Okay, and then I think John, who's our head of solutions engineering, is also going to add on to that question. Yeah. So, I, I, can you guys hear me? Thank yeah. You. Thanks. Uh, there's a question by Gavin about uh, having a mechanism for Vault to be item potent. Um, one uh, way that we recommend people to manage Vault by itself is through infrastructure as code. And we have a tool called Terraform that allows you to describe exactly what you want your Vault cluster to look like 
so that when you're going from zero to whatever you iterated over time, you can make those changes as code, put it through your version control uh, uh, change review process, and then Terraform will make sure in an idempotent way that those changes are made. So if you stand up a new, let's say, dev vault cluster, um, it takes whatever was in production and mimics that exact same behavior in that new vault cluster. Or if you're taking an existing prod cluster, cluster and you're looking at day two operations, you need to, let's say, add a new mount rather than going through a UI or a CLI where it's kind of hard to script and remember what those commands are and what order you have to run them in. Terraform has uh, natural uh, or implicit dependency management and it manages that graph of complex secrets that depend on each other, let's say your resources and mounts that depend on each other uh, for you. So Terraform, it's the Vault provider in Terraform and uh, is probably the best way as code to manage Vault that exists today without having to write all the bash scripts and maintain those yourself. Um, it is uh, written in HCL, HashiCorp configuration language, which is a human readable uh, way uh, that you can describe all the different resources that uh, are within Vault, whether it be auth methods or secret engines or um, policies, uh, Sentinel policies as well, whatever it may be. And that's uh, fully convertible to JSON. So if you're more comfortable with JSON, um, there's even a newer version of HCL that makes that uh, even nicer. Hopefully that answers your question, Gavin. Okay, thank you, John. Okay, and the next question, Minnie. Um, so someone's asking, between primary vault and performance clusters, um, can they write secrets to both the clusters and, rep and replication happens both ways? Um, yeah, that's actually a good question. It, it, is, it is possible to do that. And actually, um, I, I, didn't, I wasn't demonstrating that in this demo, but you can enable a, a, a secrets backend, such as K, uh, the key value to replicate to your secondary location as well as the ability to write to that. And then one point that I was making in the demo was actually the ability to prevent that behavior. So I kind of took the opposite with my demo by showing a, a local a key value that was actually excluded from replication. So to answer that question, you can do both, either the ability to uh, read and write in both directions or the ability to segregate what secrets get replicated to another vault cluster. Awesome. Okay, thanks for clarifying, Vinny. Um, next question. Um, so someone's asking, can we replicate and force ER to our local instance on-prem or to our AWS instance? Um, yeah, actually that's a pretty common practice in that a lot of enterprises are still dealing with private data centers. And in some cases, your production vault cluster may sit in a private data center and have some either performance replicas or disaster recovery replication happening into either another data center or a private or a public cloud. Uh, there's considerations obviously around the networking behind any of those scenarios that would have to be taken into consideration. If you're failing over from a private data center to a public cloud, you'd naturally have to have the proper routes and paths in place for any systems or users to access that once you've executed that failover. Does that answer the question there? Um, hopefully, if not, just feel yep. free to type in again and we can always come back to it, um, whoever that was. And then, so now um, someone's asking Vinny, is there a reference architecture available for creating an enterprise cluster, including all the system requirements needed? Um, they're looking for geo replicated in Azure specifically. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. Uh, in that uh, in that question, I linked to our reference architecture docs for Vault, which does cover the uh, deployment topology for multiple data centers. Uh, that includes Vault replication, a lot of what uh, Vinny was describing. So we're uh, can, we're always improving that. And if anything is missing, uh, don't hesitate to reach out. We can either point you in the right direction or update those docs uh, to ensure that um, it has every. Uh, every bit that you need to be successful there. Yep, thanks, John. And yeah, so that's pretty much gonna be the best path to send that question down, as well as through engaging with the enterprise team here at HashiCorp. That's also part of our job is to help architect a robust solution and take all of your specifics to your environment into account and, and help design the best possible solution for you, specific to whether you're in a private data center or a public cloud. 
Yeah. Okay. Um, so uh, now, Vinny, someone's asking you to please share your thoughts and concerns on running clusters of Vault and Console on Kubernetes. Um, they're saying they'd like to understand examples of real production concerns um, with running within orchestrators. Um, yeah, I mean, and I can, you know, since, since John's on as well, I mean, there's a couple uh, answers we could probably throw out that the first right now is that, um, you know, our, our, our enterprise approved deployments of Vault are not at the moment recommended for running on a Kubernetes cluster. So as far as how we would deploy today, it's going to be, you know, through the use of either physical or virtual machines backed by console. There's a number of ways that you can configure, can configure Vault and run it, either in a virtual or physical machine or containerized. But as far as production deployments go today, that's sort of where we stand today, but there's a lot of work taking place and requests to have, you know, some of that flexibility. And I don't know, John, if you want to weigh in on some of that. Yeah, so I think there's just a few things to keep in mind uh, as you look to use a cluster scheduler like Kubernetes to manage Vault. Uh, one of the concerns with running it on Kubernetes and why we didn't initially recommend it is the idea of cluster schedulers is you can you know, bin pack workloads. So there's many different services running on a specific node. The cluster scheduler can move those around as necessary um, or as nodes uh, fail. Now, uh, Vault is... Uh, a stateful uh, service. And so as just like with databases, moving those around rapidly isn't a great idea just because, you know, you can fail over with HA if it does, but you don't want to keep doing that just because when you have so many applications that are depending on uh, Vault for, let's say, dynamic secrets or they need to re-authenticate often or you have a massive cluster, if there's, uh, if, you, if, you, if Vault goes down or there is a blip uh, as you do a failover, it's generally not a great idea. So that's just something to keep in mind. So what we recommend, uh, if you're going to run it on something like Kubernetes is that they are uh, the the pods that you're running for Vault are on dedicated hosts and you don't have any other services running on it. And I linked to a production hardening guide and one of the points in there is that um, if you have other services that are in containers, you don't want them to be able to interrogate Vault containers because uh, or someone that's on the host may be fixing a, a separate service that is uh, not as important, but they're able to then dump Vault's memory and they get access to you know all of Vault's unseal keys and um, or uh, secret data, uh, which is generally a bad idea. There's different ways that we help protect against that, but you generally want Vault to be by itself where no one has access. All the alarms and bells go off if someone is SSHing into the machine that Vault is on, just because it's very sensitive. They can end up decrypting all of your uh, all of your secrets, and that's generally really bad. Um, now, what we're doing is <clears throat> being more progressive in how we recommend people manage this. And so if you see, we saw we recently uh, announced that we're uh, rolling out a, a Helm chart for console. And that's the best practices way to run console in Kubernetes. And what we recommend is console as your storage backend uh, so that you can take advantage of the features like replication. Now uh, you can kind of see the, the progression of that will be what's the next one will vault. Um, and we're thinking about how we can best design and work on those Helm charts so that you have a plug and play solution to run vault and console on Kubernetes successfully. So stay tuned in the next couple of weeks and months, um, especially as we lead up to, to HashiConf, it's different things we're making uh, or to make that experience on Kubernetes much, much better, uh, more so than just best practices documentation, but actual templates uh, for how you would go about doing it. Okay, and um, this is pretty related. I don't know if you want to expand at all, but the last question, and then if we, this is the last question, so if anyone else has questions, please submit them now, um, or we will wrap up after this. So um, Vinny and John, the last question is, um, what technology can you recommend to run um, HA Vault on-premise without using cloud? Um, they're saying that so right now, they're trying to do so via multiple containers with Kubernetes. And that was, Amanda, kind of to the discussion that John and I were just having around sort of where we're at with some of the concerns around doing that and then sort of what may be coming in the future with and nothing our, else. Yeah, I think I think we pretty much hit that one. 
Okay. Um, I mean, one thing to add to that is whatever you're using to manage services on-prem, uh, you can use to manage all. It's just a single go binary runs uh, almost everywhere. And so as long as you have something that can monitor and manage the service, um, it can be Kubernetes, it can be running on metal, um, it can be through config management, it can be Nomad, Terraform. There's many different ways. It would just be how you normally manage services on-prem. Okay, thank you, John. Um, so now, um, someone's asking, and I feel like this is a common question, is it possible to do HA without using console? It, it is, but the, the point I was making is, is with our, the enterprise relationship with HashiCorp, we do have to standardize on certain architectures, and that today is our standard back end that we, we can fully support would be a console back end. So if you're looking for support, end to end, not just vault server support, but as, as well as the back end that is hosting that as well. That's where our recommendation would be to back it with console. It's still possible without the use of console, but you, if you were to start to go down that road, you could start to drift away from areas where you wouldn't be fully supported necessarily by your support agreement and in, in going sort of against best practice, if that makes sense. Okay, awesome, thank you. So that was the last question. So thank you so much, Vinny, that was a great demo. And thank you, John, for helping with the Q&A. Um, so I hope everyone enjoyed today's Hangout and has a better understanding of high availability within a Vault cluster. Um, thank you for joining us. And a big thank you to Vinny for his time today. As I mentioned at the beginning, this Hangout was recorded and we will make the recording available on our website after processing. I will send an email to everyone who registered with that recording link. Um, that wraps things up for us. So have a great day. Bye, everyone. All right. Thanks, everybody, for attending.